Hey, welcome back. Uncle Joe here. <laughs> that was weird. Joe Gilder here. Uh, I want to talk about sibilance. What is sibilance? It's when you sing a vocal and the S gets real loud and obnoxious. And you, especially early on, in the, if you're new to recording, you think, well, that's just the way it is, I guess. It's not. There are lots of ways to deal with it. I'm going to tell you four ways to do it in Studio One. There's actually more. So find one that you like and we'll dive into it. But real quickly, here's what's happening. Typically, we record vocals a lot of times with condenser microphones. Condenser microphones are liars. They exaggerate. So what my vocal sounds like recorded isn't what it sounds like in real life. There's extra high frequencies that get captured by the mic. It's lovely. That's what m makes a vocal have this nice airy presence to it that we all love. But it also means that things like S's get captured real clearly and get exaggerated a little bit. Second thing, pair that with the fact that we use compression on vocals and compression on a vocal to oversimplify it turns the vowels down, turns the consonants up. So the ah gets turned down and the s gets turned up. Ergo sibilance. Thankfully, we have lots of tools to solve that. Uh, I'm going to show you four of them today, but let me introduce you to our demo track of the day. Really good example of sibilance. What happens when there's sibilance? It's exaggerated, but that can be what it sounds like, especially once you've added compression. I had one of my one of my clients ask me, hey, "How do? What do we do if we just have one? There's really just one S in the whole song. That's a problem, and I want to deal with that. What's the best way to deal with that?" Um, so that was what prompted me to do this video. Um, I'm going to show you how to deal with all of them. But this can apply, de depending on the approach that I show you, some might be more conducive if there's really just one problem area versus every S in the song is chopping your head off and you want to know how to deal with it. So the first way to deal with this is the most, um, I'd say the most knuckle dragger sort of a way for us Neanderthals. And that is to simply find every spot where there is sibilance. And you can tell what has sibilance by, um, the. it looks very spiky and just turn that part down by literally editing it. So here, we could just go like this, select it. Now while it's selected, we could just press, for me it's it's the minus arrow on my keyboard because I've got this keyboard shortcut for minus three dB. I've got it set to this, which is the hyphen next to the zero. It's plus and minus for me. And that will turn it down. It'll also separate the audio like that. Wa-bam. Um, you could also just double-click in this top portion and then pull that down. So you could literally just visually pull that down to about the... Make that blob about the same size as the other blobs. Here's another big honking chunk of sibilance. We could turn that one down too. And that technically will work. And the sibilance. And then we can kind of massage that. That might feel a little too quiet because we need to hear the S's, but... When there's sibilance, that works better than it did before. All right, so that's the first solution. Literally going in and editing every S. Pros, you can do every one exactly how you want it. Cons, it's time consuming and arguably not necessary. There are other tools that do this better, but it's still a valid approach. Approach number two isn't much better than this one. But it's, it at least involves not chopping your audio up into a thousand little pieces. And that is to use either clip gain envelopes or just regular volume automation. So they're, they look similar. The only difference really for our sakes today is clip gain happens on the clip level. It's happening to the audio before it ever goes through all your plugins. So if you want to bring the sibilance down before it ever hits your compressor, then you do it here. Or using volume automation, you can. it's just moving the fader up and down to turn down these little sections. I probably wouldn't ever do that because once you write volume automation, you're stuck with it. I did a video on this recently. Um, but here's what it would look like with clip gain. If I had to use one of these two, this is what I would use. We turn clip gain on here. So we right click and choose gain envelope. Just check it to, to be able to see it. And then we just kind of come in it's very similar to before. We just select it and we can either bring this whole section down like this. So it's almost exactly what we did before, except the audio is still one piece of audio. It's still one event, which is nice because having it super chopped up can be kind of annoying visually. Um, but also with this version, you could be a little more strategic with it. Maybe you just want it kind of go like this. So instead of being the entire chunk is turned down by the exact same amount, it's more of a slow burn and then build up. 
So this was before, it kind of spikes right there and goes back down. We can kind of do the opposite of that. So now it's just kind of the same level of S-ness. Either way, it should work just fine. And there's sibilance. Works better. Uh, I'd probably do this one over this one because this one just seems faster and simpler. Sibilance typically isn't that long either. It's a I exaggerated it here to make it super long. Reminds me of that. What's that Radiohead song where he says, um, oh, I can't remember, um, but he holds out the S like super long. It's ridiculous. That would be a challenge. I'd probably have to edit it this way. But that is another way, way number two, to deal with sibilance. Let's undo all of that and move on to number three. Number three is probably my favorite, probably much to the chagrin of the... Studio One developers, uh, it's to use dynamic EQ. So in case you didn't know, Pro EQ 3, which you have if you have a fairly recent version of Studio One, um, has dynamic EQ built in. What does that mean? That means these EQ bands can also act like little multiband compressors, sort of. Um, so I could do something like this. I could set up, let's do it like a shelf. That'll be fun. So I could have this... EQ shelf thing. Let's change the Q. There we go. All right. To somewhere about, let's say, right around 5K. Let's say 5K. And if we hit play on that, we can hear the sibilance is really loud. So this allows me, I can hit this D, turn on dynamic mode, um, and I can say, when it crosses the threshold, let's turn it down quite a bit. So it's going to leave it flat. But then when the signal comes in and those high frequencies get too loud, it's going to smack them down. They're sibling. Okay, that's too much. Let's go something more reasonable. They're sibling. They're sibling. They're sibling. Without. They're sibling. With. They're sibling. That is pretty handy. Now, here's what's fun about this. It's basically working like a de which I'll show you in the next one. But this also allows us to do this little trick. We could have a boost that boosts essentially everything but the S's. So if we wanted our voice to have this nice, crisp, airy top end, this one band of EQ is doing two things. It's boosting the vowel sounds, essentially, and then it's cutting the consonants. Now, that may be too big of a boost. It might not work. But listen to my voice will sound. What happens? My voice has this nice, airy crispiness to it of the boost, but then the de -esser comes in, the, the dynamic comes in and tames down the S's. What happens when there's sibilance? So this is a great visual. This is literally what's happening. You can watch it in real time. I don't have to explain it. What happens when there's sibilance? So it boosts when it needs to and it cuts when it needs to. That's super interesting. Now, don't go nuts with this. I hear a lot of mixes from people where they just go nuts with boosting high frequencies. Partially because they just don't know any better. Uh, partially because... They don't have as much hearing up in the higher frequencies because they're older. Just be careful with this. But this is a way, you could do this with boosting with the highs and then using a de -er later. I just like the fact that I can kind of do both and they kind of work together as one. Super fun. All right, the final uh, way to do this, and it's probably the simplest way and the one you should probably start with, uh, is to use the actual de -er plugin in Studio One. For years, we did not have a de -er plugin. We do now. And typically for me, it works right out of the box. Frequency, you can solo to find that particular offending sound. That seems to be catching it pretty good. Um, depending on male, female vocals, you may go higher and lower. Um, and then you just amount, the amount of S reduction, it defaults for me to about 24. Let's just see if that works. What happens when there's sibilance? So you see it visually, and it's cutting like 3 to 6 dB, and you think, great. Actually, th to my ears, that doesn't sound good enough. So let's just keep turning it down until it's enough. What happens when there's sibilance? That works pretty well. We could go wide. That has to do with like the shape of how much of the frequencies are getting cut, I believe. What happens when there's sibilance? That works pretty well. Um, so that obviously is the simpler one. It took like two clicks, and we got our sound. We got progressively more clicks with the other options that I gave you. So I gave them to you in kind of reverse complexity order, the simplest one being the de -er. Start there. This is what happens for me. I'll, do, I'll choose the simplest option. If it's not working pretty quickly, then I'll go to a slightly more complicated option. And if you get down to the, the situation that I explained at the beginning, where it really is just one S in the entire song, then there's no reason to like try to get one plug-in to only react to that one section and then leave the others alone. 
You could automate a plugin on and off for this section. Like I, like I said, these are four ways to do it. I could probably come up with another four or more ways to, to do this same effect. But if in that situation, if it really is just one, I would just do this. Oops, not that. I would do this and just call it a day. So there you go. Lots of ways to deal with that pesky sibilance. See ya. Ha <laughs> ha.